Welcome back to the Vandy Sports Podcast. I'm Joey Dwyer here with Billy Derrick after Jerry Stackhouse's second media availability of the fall. Today, Billy and I were both able to be there. Billy's first time talking to Jerry Stackhouse. So it was a fun day for us. Stack gave us some good stuff. So we'll talk about that in a second. But first, I want to shout out our presenting sponsor for basketball season, The Wash House. Today's show is presented by The Wash House. Are you dreading laundry day, Billy? Yes. Is it stealing time to do the things you truly enjoy? Let the laundry professionals at the Wash House take care of that for you. With two convenient locations in the greater Nashville area, just drop off your dirty laundry and our professional attendants can give you back the one thing you can never have enough of. And that, what is that, Billy? Oh, I caught him at a bad Your time. Your time, Joey. Within 24 hours, you can pick up your nicely folded, fresh and clean laundry ready to be put away. Check out www.washhouseclean.com. Stop in today and get your time back. Today, obviously talking about Jerry Stackhouse's Second presser and probably last presser before Presbyterian. Talked a lot about his rotation size, talked about his defense as freshman. Billy, what did you have to take away from today as a whole? Firstly, Joey, uh, there's a lot of defense talk, right? Not just from Stack, but we also heard from Ezra Mignon and Colin Smith. And really the first thing Stack said was, I think we want to be a defensive team. You you had the first question, and I think you asked him about overall like style uh, uh, of play. And I I think, Joey, they want to pride themselves on the defensive end. And we've talked about that, right? They want to get out and transition and because they believe without a dominant post presence like a Liam Robbins, they're going to have to do that, right? They're going to have to get out and transition. They're going to have to create turnovers, and that will create offense for them. So, number one, they want to be a defensive team. Ezra Mignon said he thinks they have a special defense. Uh, so, I, I mean, <laughs> Vanderbilt fans, I'm sure, get excited about hearing that. And then he talked about the scrimmages. Not Nothing super detailed, but he said we're on schedule. You know, We feel good about where we're at. He said they he they do have still nagging injuries. He, Tyron Lawrence was out. Van, uh, Van Allen Lubin was out but they should both be back. Uh, but he did gave, give a lead door update, and I don't think this is really much of an update. I don't think we thought he would be available uh, for the opener, but Stack did say he's ramped up his court work, and uh, he said he thinks he'd be a stretch. It'd be a stretch to say he'd be ready for game one, which, I mean, I think we both were pretty aware of at, at that point. And Joey, I want to. I came into today, of course, my first time talking to Stack. I was excited. I, I think, I think Stack's a. I think he's an entertaining guy. I think he's interesting, and you know, I think there, I still think there's fans that haven't really you know, been introduced to his personality and and really know like who he is outside of just a basketball coach. And so I think we're going to try to bring some of that out of him this year. Maybe get more of that personality because like the fan, I think the fans like it. I think they saw that last year. Uh, but I asked him about the biggest difference between this year's team and last year's team. And from the outside looking in, there are some stark differences, Joey. And I think he said basically what we have have talked about, right? More length, more athleticism, more shooting. And that points to a better team than last year, right? I mean, obviously, like if if you're more athletic and you have better shooters, you're going to be a better basketball team. Now, it may not pan out that way, like especially at, at the beginning, right? They may not look like a better team than last year right out of the gate. But I think, you know, down the stretch of this season and you get towards that middle part and then the second half of the season, I think you can expect some pretty good things uh, from this team. Now, whether it results in wins uh, on, you know, in, in the schedule, who knows? But I think Stack likes his length, his athleticism, their shooting. Also, the number of guys in the rotation. Joe, I, th- I thought that was interesting how, I forget who asked him, but, he basically responded by saying, kind of waited a little bit, and he said, we've got 10 or 11 guys that, you know, we like. And he said that, and I was like, wow. I mean, that that's that's high praise. And then he said, heck, we might even have 12 or 13, right? <laughs> he really likes this team. He mentioned Graham Calton. Um, I don't know that he mentioned Colson Messer, but he has before uh, mm-hmm. with you. Uh, so I think that's interesting. He really likes his team. Now, most coaches do at this point in the season. You know, we could get two weeks into the season and he's complaining about his team. But again, who knows, right? At this point, that's all that matters, right? He likes his team. He likes what he's got. But he also added that they could shrink down to eight or nine. So that answer was kind of all over the place from him. But he did say, I think deep down, he believes he's got at least, you know, at most maybe 10 or 11 guys that, you know, will play. And if injuries happen, of course, you know, they'll, they'll plug and play. But I think that's interesting, Joey, 10 or 11 guys that deserve to play. 
And, you know, we've talked about Jason Rivera-Torres. He called him special defensively. I thought that was interesting. A long, lanky athlete. And then fan support. I, I made sure to ask him about, like, how important are the fans this year to your success? And he looked excited. He kind of got a grin on his face. He said, everywhere I go, a lot of people are excited about feeling this building again. We're excited about bringing Memorial Magic back this season. And, you know, most coaches, they're excited about fan support. But I think Stackhouse knows he needs it this year. I think the fans are starved for a winner in any sport. Right? I mean, football season can do some damage, and it has. And I think Vanderbilt fans all of a sudden are are fairly excited. Um, but that creates pressure. And I, he didn't he didn't get asked that. I think looking back, I wish I would have asked, what's the pressure like? You know, I, I mean, obviously that's not no games have happened, so it's kind of hard to ask a question like that. But you know, are you feeling the pressure? Like, is does this team feel pressure heading into this season? Honestly. Um, so we might ask him that that down the road, but Joey, we got a lot today, at least for me. I mean, it was my first time. I might be overrating that, but I think it was interesting. Just kind of, he gives good answers. I think he gives thoughtful answers. And, um, you know, I thought Ezra and Colin were good too. So overall, those are really my takes, Joey. And, uh, it's going to be interesting. I don't think we knew they were going to be doing it this early, but I think you texted me a couple of days ago and said, Hey, they're doing it Tuesday. So uh, we, we got down there and um, yeah, I'm sure I don't think he'll talk again this week, but early next week, I would guess right before maybe Presbyterian, who knows, uh, but not talking before Presbyterian, that was the last one. That was that's okay. So yeah, I mean, it was long. It was 18 minutes of, of him talking, you know? So, <laughs> and you know, we had some jokes around about maybe speeding it up, but I mean, listen, this is our only chance um you know to to get to talk to stack so no it was good and um some interesting things nothing groundbreaking lee dort he's not going to be available game one i think that was probably the the top thing we got away just kind of official word but uh we'll, we'll probably keep pestering him on lee especially after even after presbyterian starting then yeah i'm glad you brought up defense and depth because i think those things two both go hand in hand i think if he wants to go 10 deep, it's really going to help his defense. I don't know that it helps his offense get in a rhythm, especially if he's subbing those guards out. I don't anticipate him doing that a whole lot, but I feel like his defense and his depth are things that he both likes. Where I look at defense and I'm a little concerned is just the metrics. And individually, I'm not sure that they have any phenomenal defenders. I think Ezra's a fine defender. Evan Taylor, I think, can do some good things for him. But I think as a whole, they're probably going to be better than the sum of the parts. And I have some optimism coming out to, of today that maybe they can make some deflections. Maybe they can force some turnovers and be better than the sum of their parts as a whole. And that's kind of where I look defensively. I don't think they have any guys who are going to go and shut Rob Dillingham down, but I think they're going to have guys who are able to kind of buy in and do good things for them throughout the course as a of a unit and throughout the course of a season. So I think that's kind of where his optimism is. And I think looking at that depth, especially – in terms of long athletic guys at forward, I think that helps him out in terms of the front court as well. At least in his mind, I think that's the hope they're clinging to is that maybe even with a Van Lubin who's not been healthy throughout most of the summer, as Stackhouse said today, I think that was worth noting since we hadn't really heard a whole lot of that. Yeah, Lee Dort's not super healthy. Having a guy like Colin Smith who can upship to the five or Jaqueline Roberts who can upship to the five will really help them out. And I don't think that's an ideal position. Colin Smith said they're not going to play me there unless I have to play there. So I think that tells you kind of what you need to know about that. But I think as a whole, defensively, you're kind of hoping that they can negate some of those things by using that length and athleticism and forcing some turnovers. Speaking of length and athleticism, I think Malik Presley was a guy who I took some things away from today. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Stackhouse mentioned when I asked him, who are some of the guys that can contribute for you off the bench? He said Jason Rivera Torres first. Then it was Malik Presley. He mentioned the slashing, how he can get to the line. Uh, that's when he brought up Van Allen Lubin getting hurt, but I think Malik Presley is a guy who we've heard a lot about throughout Stacks pressers that we hadn't really heard a whole lot about this summer outside of maybe one or two sources here or there. I think Malik Presley is a guy we probably should have talked about more earlier in the offseason. It feels like he'll have a chance to play. Stacks going to mention all the freshmen. I think everybody's going to get a chance, but Malik Presley feels like one he's been really impressed with. So, Billy, I have some more, but I think those are some things as well as Colin Smith being a lead candidate. What would you take from Colin today and what you take – from what Stack said about him as well. Yeah, I, I, Colin felt more mature, Joey. I mean, last year as a freshman, you know, didn't he didn't really speak to the media much in general, 
but it was interesting. He, I mean, just you know, seeing him walk over after Ezra was kind of funny. Ezra's Ezra's listed at six feet. <laughs> Joey, this just in, he's not six feet. <laughs> Ezra is probably closer to five ten. And I, you know, no disrespect. I, I just, it's funny uh, that they let you know they always list guys taller than they are. But yeah. it was just funny. You get Ezra. It, well, you go from stack to Ezra to <laughs> Colin, and it's kind of an interesting uh, shift there. But yeah, Colin. I mean, six nine. He's a big. He's a big kid, Joe. I mean, he's physical. I think last year you didn't really see a ton of his physicality come out. I mean, he's at the, he's long. He's athletic. He's he put on shoot. twenty pounds too. That's where yeah, the I mean, physicality he, comes from. Yeah, he said he put on 20 pounds, but not just pounds, but good pounds, like mm-hmm. good weight, you know, and, and that's important. Like, you know, it, it, did, it wasn't like he put on like 20 pounds of fat. I mean, that's 20 pounds of, of some muscle right there, um, you know, so it'll be interesting to see, does his game change at all, right? Does he, you know, is he playing in the paint more? I mean, I think the, the first answer to that question is yes, he's going to have to. And there's going to be some pressure on Colin Smith this year to, you know, he mentioned guarding Shibwe in the post last year. And, and, you know, he's confident he can do that. I don't think he wants to do that <laughs> game in, game out. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody would. But, uh, no, Joey, I was in, I was impressed. And he talked about being a vocal leader. Uh, he said he's work, he, he's been working on being more uh, of a vocal leader this season. Uh, 20 pounds, of course. I mean, I think he's he's the X factor for me, Joey. And, and then, you know, for Ezra – calm cool collected you know he's he's a smart kid um he's very calculated uh in, in what he says and and for me it was just i i made sure to ask him about the shooting adjustments i love how you asked him that uh and maybe it was kind of a follow-up to something he said but i'm glad you asked him that at sec media days because i made a point to to ask him and stack about it and stack really just said he's been in the gym you know he, he's been working but i want to get deeper into how like i'll be interested to see does his form look different than last year or is, or is it more of, I don't know that it's necessarily like different. I think there was maybe a tweak here or there, but I think it was more so just repping it out rather than changing forms like stack. Said. Yeah. I think that, that that's what I got from stack. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and yeah, for Ezra, I also made sure to ask him about the challenges last year of just adjusting to the offense but we were talking after, and you had told me, because, Joe, you're my, I mean, <laughs> you're my guy. You're everybody's guy for Vanderbilt basketball. But, you know, you made sure to tell me that it was more of like the stage, you know, guarding, you know, SEC point guards, guarding. Uh, I mean, their non-conference slate was tough last year. So he right out of the gate, you know, VCU, Southern Miss, Crowley, and, and some of those guys. So he just had, that was probably a bigger adjustment. Like, he didn't even really say the, the playbook and learn. I don't even know if you call it playbook, but just the scheme and everything learning that wasn't that bad. Uh, and then we talked after and you had told me that it was more of just adjusting to the stage and playing great players night in, night out and having to come in front of the media and, and social media stuff and all, all kinds of things. So I thought that was interesting for, you know, from Ezra, but two guys that are mature and I think they're going to be leaders. They're going to have to be leaders. We know the leader Ezra is, but for Colin Smith, Joey, first thing I thought of just looking at it was like, this kid's a lot bigger and uh, he's going to be a little bit of a different type of player. Uh, And I think that should excite Vanderbilt fans. I think where you can maybe see the biggest difference with Colin Smith is not only in terms of his body and his positional versatility, which I think he had last year, the first positional versatility this year, I think maybe he could be more of an off the dribble threat. And I asked him about that. I think he thinks with a bigger role and it's more responsibility in that offense, more stake in that offense, he can be a guy who can put it on the floor here or there and go get his own shot. I think that's what really excites you if you're a Vanderbilt fan is to see Colin Smith putting it on the floor and beating his guy, not off a closeout, but just straight up defender set and Colin Smith goes by him and gets a bucket. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a huge step for him. And why can't he make that step, Billy? Last year, the efficiency numbers were great. The peripherals were really good. He put on 20 pounds of weight. He's, earn more of a leadership role and he has a bigger role with this roster and could really step into that third score role. Why not Colin Smith? Why is it not his year? I think this could be a huge year for him. And if you didn't think he was going to take a step heading into today, I think he could certainly uh, convince you otherwise yeah. after today. So Colin Smith's a guy we've talked about a lot throughout the offseason taking a step, but today I think confirmed a lot of what we heard. I didn't think he even put on that much weight. I heard he did some really good work with his body, but I had only heard 
seven or eight pounds. I hadn't heard he put on 20 pounds. So that's a big adjustment for Colin Smith. And one that I think is really significant. Jason Rivera Torres is another guy that I think you like hearing about his defensive kind of versatility mm-hmm. and how he can get his hands on balls. I think there's a lot of good things that he does. Malik Presley, those are really the main guys I take things from. Uh, obviously, Ezra Magno and Tyron Lawrence are going to be the guys. We've known this all along, but whether Colin Smith can step into a third score role and maybe push for an all-SEC team versus being a seven or eight point per game score that's really only doing it off the catch and not giving you a whole lot of personal or positional versatility, mm-hmm. I think that's probably the difference between them being a really competitive SEC team versus them kind of sputtering out early in league play. So Colin Smith's the X factor here, like we've talked about. It was originally Lee Dort, but obviously it doesn't seem like that'll be as improved as we had thought. Paul Lewis, I think, is a guy who they've liked a lot from. They want to move him off the ball. So that sophomore class is going to be big for them. Also, Van Allen Lubin being part of that sophomore class. And if he can get healthy and hit the ground running early, I think that would be huge. I'm not sure how many minutes he'll be able to play early on because of those injuries. But if Vanderbilt can get him at full strength after those first four games and get him into Thanksgiving week rolling, I think they're in pretty good shape. So sophomore class, Billy. Yeah, that's key, Joey. I mean, those sophomores are so big this year. And you talk about Colin Smith. I have a feeling we're going to be talking a lot about Colin Smith uh, this season. You know, obviously, Mignon, Lawrence, those those guards are, are going to be the straw that stirs the drink. But I think Colin Smith is going to be the glue that keeps this project together, or at least can be, right? And if Vanderbilt, like you said, if they want to make the tournament, he has to be, right? I mean, you know, there's just not another candidate. Like Colin Smith is, he's so versatile. He's gotten big enough to be able to, 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 you know, to bang down low with, with some of the elite five men in the league. He talked about that with Shibway. So there's really not another candidate that, that, that can. Um, and I thought it was interesting thinking about Van Allen Lubin. You know, we didn't ask Stack a ton about him. I wanted to, but I saw his tweet from Jerry, uh, Jerry, John Rothstein about you know early probably after lunch or so right after i got out and i guess he talks to coaches he had talked to stackhouse and stackhouse told him that vandy's going to use lubin in spurts as a small ball five during this season and of course that caught my eye i don't know if you already knew that joey i don't know if you saw that from rothstein i just think it's interesting like a small ball five that's what (laughs) <laughs> that's what we're calling it here. Like that, that's, that's Vanderbilt and, and stacks stack had referred to a lot of small ball. And so I think that's interesting. You look at this team that will likely be their identity because they have to, I mean, it's fairly yeah. obvious when you, when Liam Robbins transferred out that shift in their in stacks mind probably already started happening. So they've been preparing for that. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it's sort of a high risk, high reward. Right. I mean, you, you know, it's a risk and, and, and if it works out, it can really work out and you, and you can beat teams like that. But if it doesn't, you know, you'll, you'll lose out on some of those, those games. So I thought it was yeah. interesting that, that Rothstein tweet, I didn't know, I didn't know that. I didn't know Lubin was going to be playing in spurts like that. That term spurts kind of got me there, but mm-hmm. uh, again, we don't know, Joey, there's so much to still happen. Um, yeah. And we're still, you know, figuring out what this team is. We don't really know. I mean, we won't really have a good read until a week or two into the season. But nonetheless, it is interesting. I thought that tweet was interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, I've always thought they viewed Lubin as a four. I think they have to view him as a five, though. I don't think there's any other choice right now. Yeah. Ben Allen Lubin cannot consistently play the four on this roster. Even if Lee Dort's healthy, I don't see how he can consistently be a four man. I think his shooting needs to take a step forward for him to accomplish that. And that's not even the biggest obstacle here is floor spacing. The biggest obstacle is they don't have personnel to be able to move him down to the four. I think Stack and their staff has always kind of wanted to play him at the four. And maybe that'll happen next season once they get some more personnel in, maybe from the portal. Van Allen Lubin, I think, has to play the five and kind of shows you how they're undermanned. But also, I think Van Allen Lubin's a weird kind of prototype player where mm-hmm. he's a little small to play the five, but he has that physicality. And I don't know that he moves as well as a Colin Smith, who's kind of my ideal four. They're about the same height. Colin Smith can shoot it better. He can move better, but he's not quite as physical as Van Allen Lubin. So I think Lubin has to play the five. But yeah, I think they've always viewed him there. It's a little concerning to me, the in spurts part, because what else are you going to do with the five? Is Lubin going to play the four and Colin Smith's going to play the five? I don't think that's really going to work unless you play Smith at the four offensively. Is Thomas Harris going to play the five? I'm not sure if he can guard that spot. Carter Lang got some rave reviews from Stack today, but I think I'd maybe 
pump the brakes a little bit on him being a 15 minute per game guy at the five in the SEC at six nine, being a freshman who's not tremendously athletic. So I think that's certainly an interesting point. And especially with Lubin kind of being banged up this offseason, which is something we hadn't heard a whole lot of. I think it was more minor stuff with his foot and I think stacks that are groin as well. So a lot to digest there with Van Allen Lubin, but got to play the five, Billy. I don't think in spurts is going to do it for him. Yeah, I, I was just kind of caught off guard a little bit. Like I, I did not know that was the terminology. Um, and you never know with coaches like that could co- that could totally change here in a few weeks. So, <laughs> you know, uh, but no, Joey, overall, I thought it was interesting stack. You know, he's pretty upbeat, excited about the season. And I think fans are obviously football has played a part of that. But I think there is there's true reason. And we've talked about that. But mm-hmm. there's also some things that could potentially hold this team back, like every team. I mean, you got your strengths and weaknesses, um, but at least for fans, Joey, there is that. There is hope, right? There, there's, you know, it's not lost, you know, uh, going into a season. I think that's a good thing for this this fan base and for this this program. And Stack also said the season opener should be sold out. So he... Uh, <laughs> well, that was, I think that was a little out of context. I think he said... He made he kind of made a joke and said if everyone's on the street if everyone on the street who tells me they're coming comes will be sold out but I think yeah. he, that was more tongue in cheek. True, yeah, but nonetheless, I think he's excited. I think fans should be excited as well, um, and he wants fans to come out. You know, he knows they need they need them when, when they've got those home games, and we saw them last year. So uh, it's gonna be fun, and uh, we'll see. There's a lot of mystery, Joey, but uh, I think this team is ready and, and excited. A lot of that mystery for me kind of sits in the rotation. I still don't know if we have a great idea of what his rotation is going to look like after today. We know the five is going to be Mignon, Lawrence, Taylor, Smith, Lubin in all likelihood, and then Lewis is going to play a lot, obviously. I guess Lee Dort's going to play a lot once he's back. Kamatero's going to play a lot, I was assume. Jason Rivera Torre is going to play a lot. Malik Presley seems like a dark horse candidate to play a lot. Isaiah West seems like maybe a guy who Stack named their third point guard today. I guess maybe he'll – slot into some minutes early, but Billy, I have no idea what the back end of the rotation looks like. The I don't know what the minute distribution is going to look like. Every time I ask him what's the rotation going to look like, he says, well, I think Jason will play. I think Malik will play. I think Carter will play. I think JQ will play. And I'm like, that doesn't help because that's <laughs> four guys on top of all your veterans. That brings you to like 13 guys, and I'm not exactly sure how that fits into everything. So opening night, I'm sure we'll be tracking the minutes, and I think that's something we'll – need to look into but I would guess based on what he said today it's going to be 10 or 11 and that's kind of where I think he wants to hang his hat is 10 or 11 uh Graham Calton I think will play a little bit it seems like uh Stack loves what he's done on the gun and over the summer but I also think he's hurt with an ankle from what Stack said I think that he kind of slipped that in there but that'll be interesting to see maybe that's where he goes to 12 is when he's back but it's interesting Billy he's gonna I think he's gonna go back to his roots he just he told you he said Man, I was just talking at SEC Media Day. I, was, I didn't mean all that. So he gave a great quote, but I don't know if he necessarily meant it about keeping his guys in for the whole game. I think he knows in his mind that he has to develop his back into the roster so that when they're in SEC play and injuries come or whatever, they're going to be ready to kind of elevate above those things. And I think he's a strong believer in playing your young guys, even if they're not fully ready. And that could hurt him early, but I think – he's going to be a little more cognizant of the score and margin of victory, even if he's going to go with a bigger rotation. Yeah. Business-like approach. That's another thing I got, you know, that there was no hesitancy in, in either of the three people we talked to. Of course, Mignon is a veteran guy. Colin Smith is, is still just a sophomore, but I feel like he has taken a step just kind of, you know, being around him, listening to him. I think he has matured. And so I, I think, again, that, that's something fans can be excited about. Stackhouse, you know, he's excited. I think he knows what he's got, but he also knows this is an important year, right? Uh, the most important year to this point in uh, in his career. So, yeah, they know that. They know there's they you know there's pressure, but uh, I think they're ready. And just talking to him today, kind of you start to feel basketball. Stack talked about you know smelling the popcorn again and and getting into basketball season. I thought. That was interesting. And so once they're able to do that, once they're able to get into Memorial, smell the popcorn, see the student section, you know, see the fans back in there, you know, it might feel like the end of last season again. 
potentially. I think, you know, they, they start to quickly get back into that. I think they wanted a quick off season, you know, <laughs> they wanted to kind of keep rolling and keep that magic going. So we'll see if they can do it, Joey. Yeah, it'll be really interesting, Billy. I'm sure we're both looking forward to that. I'll be at Belmont on Monday. I think I'll try to do something for Tyler Tanner on his signing day. Karis Bilal on his signing day. I think both of them are expected to sign with Van as is Jamie Vincent next week. So it'll be a fun week with signing day and the opening week of college basketball. So, Billy, one more before I head out. I think my biggest takeaway was after the presser, I asked Jerry Stackhouse, what do you think of the outfit? And he said, uh, dress your shoes next time. So next press conference, I'll come with dress shoes and we'll move forward from there. Yeah, he said, I don't know if those new balances are going to cut it. He didn't right. really refer to the he didn't refer to the socks, but the the New Balance brand in particular. And I think he said as he was walking away that he would show would he would show you some stuff or something like he would. Is he is he is Stack getting you some shoes, Joey? <laughs> I don't know. All I know is I can't afford I can't afford the rhinestone diamond shoes. So if Stack wants me to buy something off of him, it's not going to work. But we'll have to figure out what media ethics are if Stack tries to hand me a pair of diamond shoes. I don't think it's going to get to that <laughs> point, but. I guess we'll have to consider it. I'm going to control what I can control and focus on not making fundamental technical errors with the way I dress. So <laughs> we're going to go with uh, dress shoes for next time. But, Billy, that's all I got. Any closing thoughts? No, Joey, I'm good. We'll have a, we'll have a Wednesday pod tomorrow morning with uh, Chris Luke and I talking about Vanderbilt and Auburn and you know, everything going on with the football program right now, which I'm sure everybody's ready to just shift over to basketball. But we'll have that. I'll have the pregame show Friday morning, and then uh, we will be at Auburn. Uh, it's actually in Nashville. We'll be at Vanderbilt versus Auburn uh, here in Nashville. Last home game, senior day. So last little chance here. I know they still got South Carolina, but uh, obviously the football team is uh, is struggling. They're, uh, they're in a rut, as we know. And can they get out of it? That's the question. We'll see. This is one of their chances too, I think. So yeah, we've got a lot of content coming, Joey, and uh, it'll be uh, it'll be a fun weekend. Yeah, it'll be a fun week next week as well. I can't wait for IUPUI to play Spalding at 10 a.m. on Monday morning. That's where my <laughs> eyes are set after Saturday's football game. So we'll be. Uh, I, I'm excited to see Joey Dwyer in basketball season. I feel I like you are just unhinged. Season. You know, I'm Monday. Monday's going to be one of the best days of my life, Billy. I'll be at the Belmont-Georgia State game covering the Lipscomb game while at that game and also covering that game. It's going to be heaven, Billy. Is this heaven? Nope, just college basketball. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> God bless. Thank you to the Wash House, and we'll talk to you soon.